Yes, we're here at Our Ladies with Gay. Gay, uh, you must be terribly pleased to be in a position to hand over that cheque today, given your involvement with the board and with the research. Well, I served on the board, I'm glad to say, for many, many years. I can't remember how many, and I just, on my 80th birthday this year, I decided to retire from it. And they were all desperately sorry to see me go, as you might imagine. <laughs> but having been there, I, we've just done a tour of the cardiac unit, the new cardiac unit, and bearing in mind that when I was on the board, we were talking about the new children's hospital, which is now going to be in St. James's, and we were talking then, some people were talking, I wasn't, but some people were talking about a starting date of 2016 and 2017. Quite clearly the way things are going is going to be a long time after 2016 or 17 when the first patients will come into the new hospital. Whenever it is, my, 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 my forecast now is about maybe 2022 or 23 uh, if, if they get the run of luck. Anyway, this hospital is a 1950s hospital. It was built around that time. And so because of the pressure on it, there has been bits added on to and bits added on to and bits added on to and it's gone up and it's gone out and so on. And, and the cardiac unit, the last time I saw it, was a disgrace. It was absolutely outrageous with young mothers particularly in behind a glass panel looking after their infant children who are in dire, dire straits of illness. And, and everybody could sort of gawk in at them and there was no privacy and there was nothing about it. I've just been around now this morning to celebrate the giving over of this cheque. Uh, and, and the new cardiac unit is just beautiful. It's mm. absolutely state of the art and there is comfort built into it and, and facilities and resources put into it and so on. So that's a wonderful thing to see and mm. it's an outstanding thing to be proud of. I am not good around sick children. In fact, I'm not good around hospitals at all. I, I tend to get upset. But mm. just to see what has been done in the cardiac unit is just, just amazing. So our little check, it's a very tiny check compared with the money which is raised regularly by people around the country and indeed around the world around the world for Kremlin uh, but anyway it's another little tidbit as it were to go towards a good cause great uh, book two now features uh, a host of different uh, personalities uh, Peter McFerry Colin Wilkinson Ian Paisley Maureen Gaffney John Lonergan a host of people uh, I'm prompted to ask Gay that in the course of talking to so many people and delving quite deeply into their belief systems, has any of them ever said anything that, I mean, cumulatively, I'm sure they've had an effect on your thinking, but has anybody ever said something that completely took you aback and made you think for days even? Mm, well, one person was the Reverend Ian, and if ever a man went to meet his maker, firmly, utterly and totally, in the knowledge that his Redeemer does liveth, it was Ian Paisley. And if ever a man went to meet his maker knowing that there was a warm, comfortable little place reserved for him in the celestial halls, it was Ian Paisley. And, and he, was, he astonished us in the course of the interview because he was the only man I ever met who actually believed that the Old Testament is literally true that there was a garden, there was a serpent, there was an apple tree, there was an apple, there was Adam and Eve, and the serpent did say, have a go at the apple there, you'll be as good as he is. And, and he believed that that was absolutely true. Now, I don't find, I think you'll find many theologians in the world today who would go quite that far, but nonetheless, that was his belief, and he would give way to no man or no woman in that belief. So, if he didn't, encounter what he expected to encounter at the Golden Gates, there will be one very disappointed man, that's all I can say, but he was absolutely certain that he was going to meet that. That is the sort of thing that brings you back. Apart from that, I think the programme Meaning of Life and indeed the subsequent books, plural now, mm. we didn't expect the first one to do anything like as well as it did and I'm, I'm delighted it did. Uh, and I suppose the, the reason is that we are all looking for the same thing. We are all searching for some kind of certainty, some kind of assurance, some kind of beacon to, 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 to guide us through life. And, and we are all in the same boat. And so people are generally interested in watching the interviews to see 
Has this guy any secret that we don't know about? Has this woman any secret that we don't know about? Maybe their approach would be, would be this, that and the other. Um, and, and I think that's the attraction of the programme. That's the attraction and the peculiar dynamic of the programme is it has no top on it. There's no, there's no resolution. There's no resolution. I'm not there to convince anybody that they're right or wrong and I'm not there to question them or to confront them and we make sure that they understand that before they go on. And I think that's part of the reason why people are uh, agreeable to do the interview because they, they are not given questions beforehand, they're not given any indication insofar as they may have seen other people doing the programme, they know what's expected of them. But we simply, they have to take it on the hop and they have to think out loud and they have to think while they're doing it, what, what do they actually believe? And I think what you do find is that confronted with the questions so many people have never actually sort of resolved this in their minds well what do I believe and what do I not believe and increasingly I think that you will find certainly members of the Christian churches including Catholics including Irish Catholics in large numbers they are now a la carte Catholics they pick certain things I take that and I take that, I'm rejecting that, rejecting that, that's nonsense, I don't believe. All of that is going on all the time and that is, that is increasingly an aspect of people's lives. It seems to be standard Catholic practice to be a la carte nowadays, if you ask me, in a sort of way. It's... Yes, well I'm, I'm not going to confront you on that subject yes, because yes. I, am merely yes. here, I am merely here to elicit what you actually believe and I'm not going to argue with you and I think that's, that's the, 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 the fun of the programme, that they're not going to be confronted by anybody saying what an idiot you are or something. Who can we expect to see on the next series, if I can be so bold as Well, uh, who have we all... Yes, I, I did a lovely interview, I'm happy to say, with um, Charles Spencer, who is the brother of um, Princess Di. Right. And he is a very pleasing man and a very honest man. He was very straightforward in the interview. He has written an interesting book about Charles, the assassination of Charles the First, and the and what followed when Charles the Second came to the throne to get his revenge in an, in unspeakable ways on the people who murdered his father. Who would blame him? I ask you. Yes. But anyway, um, apart from that, uh, Charles Spencer was reluctant to do interviews because it always devolves around Diana and what did did, did, did did on all of that. And we said. Princess Diana will certainly come into the conversation, but the interview is not, not, not about her. Mm. Nor was it, and in edited form, I think it would be a very nice interview. Good, good. Uh, anyone else you'd like to mention? Or? Uh, no, no, yeah. we, we, yeah. I, I'm reluctant to mention them until they're in the can, as they say, as if anything yes. goes in the can anymore, but n no, there's nobody else at the moment. Thank you very much, Kay. Great pleasure talking to you. Very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you indeed.